Israel has just discovered the second uh, invasion tunnel coming from Lebanon and, and Hezbollah. What's your view of the situation? Well, this is a very grave threat. No country in the world should have to face the threat and put up with foreign terrorist groups burrowing into their territory, yeah. intending to kill and kidnap and maim their civilian population. So the entire world should be condemning this. But of course, it is only the tip of the iceberg because as we know, Hezbollah, Iran controlled and directed Hezbollah, have 150,000 rockets in southern Lebanon pointing at Israeli civilians. This whole problem uh, needs to be dealt with and it isn't being dealt with by the people who should be dealing with it, which is the international community. We've got UNIFIL, the United Nations force in southern Lebanon, whose role is to prevent this sort of thing from happening, and they're not doing it. So the outcome of the, basically the conspiracy of the international community, which prevents action against Hezbollah, is that Israel will eventually have to carry out a military offensive against Hezbollah, and a lot of civilians, unfortunately, are gonna die in that process. Now that the uh, uh, ballistic-capable missiles have been confirmed uh, being tested by Iran. Would you support some kind of a military action against Iran? Would, would you encourage it? I think if, if it's possible to deal with Iran without military strike, then that would be preferable. And um, the, the latest US sanctions against Iran are obviously very important to try and isolate the country and to try and um, bring down its economy with a view to changing the regime there uh, and, to, and to prevent it from carrying out its uh, grossly offensive actions all around the region, not just against Israel. But ultimately, if that doesn't work, then of course military action might be necessary. And I would very much like to see if Israel has to carry out military action against Iran, then the United States, Britain and other of our allies uh, join them in that action. Uh, do you think Britain would do it for their own interest? I very much doubt Britain would do it. I think it's unlikely America would do it either, but I think they should do it in both cases. I think ultimately the people who will have to deal with this are, Iran, are, are Israel. Um, of course, they are going to get a lot of support from the United States under the current administration. If Turkey teams up with Iran against Israel, and Turkey being a NATO member, what problems does that pose? Well, enormous problems are posed by that because um, Israel is, of course, one of America's greatest allies. It's an ally of Great Britain. It's a friend and ally of many other countries around the world. Uh, and we, we really cannot find ourselves in a situation where we are confronting uh, a, a, a non-NATO ally and also a NATO ally at the same time. I think that would be an unthinkable situation. I would hope that US diplomacy will be strong enough to prevent that happening. Uh -huh. Do you suppose that uh, we should be reconsidering or NATO should be reconsidering uh, Turkey's membership given their uh uh, hostility? I think Turkey is a very important part of NATO, it's a very powerful military force right. and a very important part of the alliance, but Turkey is going rapidly in a direction that is really devolving from many of NATO's values and I think therefore we, we should, as we have to keep an eye on the situation, we should be ready to see perhaps the, the se severance of relationships between uh, Turkey and the rest of NATO. It would be very unfortunate if that happens, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't rule it out. What about the issue of uh, fighters who have gone from Europe to fight on ISIS or Taliban's behalf, who are now trying to come back into Europe? How good is the vetting process or process uh, in uh, keeping the, uh, the mainland safe from terrorism? Um, many, many uh, European citizens and residents who are Muslims have gone out to fight uh, for the Islamic State, for the Taliban, for Al-Qaeda and for other jihadist organizations in different countries in Asia and in the Middle East. Um, and many of them have come back and that's where the real problem lies. Obviously those of them that can be killed where they're fighting, that's what we should aim to do. We should try and do it and we've succeeded in killing some of them. But we should not be allowing them to come back. Once they've made a decision to go and fight jihad, they should stay where they are. They, sh they should never be allowed to come back into our countries because they will always present a threat to our citizens. We are too lax in this region, in this area. Um, and we, in some ways, we could, I think, be rightly accused of putting the human rights of terrorist enemies of ours in front of the human rights of our own population. One final question. On the issue of uh, surveillance, we have uh, in the US, of course, and I believe in Britain, you have the same thing, our uh, uh, 
uh, are local. Uh, CIA can't uh, can't spy on the U.S. and uh, MI5 is it domestic British? Can't uh, uh, can't spy uh, domestically, but uh, it's rumored that there are exchanges of information. Uh, what's the risk with uh, too liberal and too uh, politically correct, too pro-Islamist a uh, government as uh, may come in under the uh, potential Labour government uh, for uh, for politicizing the uh, the intelligence that they collect against uh, national citizens? Well, I would be very concerned if, um, for example, Jeremy Corbyn became Prime Minister of Great Britain, not just in terms of intelligence, but in terms of defence and the economy and almost everything else, because he's shown himself over many years to be a friend of our enemies. He's a friend and calls himself a friend of the IRA, of Hamas, of Hezbollah. Um, and, and I would be deeply concerned if a man like that would have access to the most secret intelligence and above all, I think, control of those intelligence agencies. Obviously, if it happens, it's something we have to manage and the agencies will be, I'm sure, getting themselves ready to deal with that kind of situation if it occurs. Thank you very much. Thank you.